Good afternoon. I'm Janet Lipinski, the Artistic Director and President of the Canadian Chopin Society. Welcome to the fourth in our series of Saturday afternoon live streams featuring laureates of the Canadian Chopin Piano Competition. I'm delighted this afternoon to be joined by the third prize winner of the fifth Canadian Chopin Piano Competition, Agne Rajivichute. Welcome, Agne, and thank you for joining us today. Hi, Janet. Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to reconnect with you and the Canadian Chopin Society. Thank you for featuring me. Thank you. So I, it's been a pleasure to speak with you again and to get back in touch after uh, several months since the last time we spoke. And I thought maybe we'd start um, by having you share with us some of your earliest memories of the music of Chopin. Um, sure. Well, I was uh, I grew up in a musical family. My mom is a pianist, piano teacher. So I was surrounded by music ever since I was born. But I think it was actually Chopin's music that made me want to become a pianist. Um, I remember one of my first pieces of Chopin that I learned was Nocturne in C sharp minor, Opus Posthumus. Um, I just remember performing it and feeling so connected to the music. And um, I think Chopin's music has this effect of being ex extremely um, disarming in its beauty and, and that to be able to experience it while playing it really made me fall in love with piano. So, so yes, Chopin's music has been a, an enormous source of inspiration in my life ever since then. That's wonderful. Um, you told me last week when we spoke about one of your early competitions, which involved a trip to Poland, I think. Yes, yes, it was a, um, a wonderful experience in my life. It was my first trip uh, for a competition abroad. Um, I think I was about 12 years old and me, my piano teacher and my dad, we all drove to Szafarna, which is a small city in Poland. Um, I'm originally from Vilnius, Lithuania, so it was possible to just hop in a car and be there in seven, eight hours. Um, it was a very special, um, special event in my life. It was my first trip to Poland. At that point, I was already obsessed with Chopin's music. So to be able to go to Poland, to feel connected to Chopin's roots felt really important to me. Um, and the whole competition experience was fun. And, and just to be able to appreciate now my parents' involvement, that you know, my dad drove me there and my teacher was there with me. Now being older, I can appreciate those little details <laughs> even more. So the, the experience was wonderful. I knew Chopin went to that town as he was a young man. So it means it meant so much to me to be able to be there. And then um, I was awarded the first prize, which was a huge surprise to me. I was very, very um, thrilled about that. And after the competition has ended, I asked my dad to take a detour and to drive me to Warsaw. <laughs> I was such yeah. a nerd. <laughs> I really wanted to go to Warsaw and to see where Chopin's heart was buried. And I know it was at the, the Holy Cross Church. And so my dad drove us there, even though we were supposed to go back to Vilnius. We had a long trip ahead of us, but we took the detour and we went to the church. We spent a couple of hours in the old city, just just to sightsee a little bit. And, and I remember just standing there in front of Chopin's monument and knowing that his heart is there. <laughs> it's just so important to me. <laughs> That's a wonderful memory, Agne. And I look forward next, next year maybe to going to that church with you when we're both there for the competition. Let's do it. <laughs> let's listen now maybe to a clip from your first round performance in the fifth Canadian Chopin competition from 2019. And we're going to listen first to uh, your pair of etudes, Opus 10, number 10, and Opus 10, number 3.
Well, thank you for that. That was a lovely performance, which takes us back just over a year ago to the fifth Canadian Chopin competition. And you were, of course, playing in Matsalani Hall. So tell us a little bit now about how you found out about the Canadian Chopin competition and maybe some of the, um, the behind the scenes stories as you were preparing for it. Um, sure. Well, I found out about the competition soon after I moved to Toronto. Um, I lived in New York for seven years, and um, my husband is Canadian. His name is Dmitry Lapkovich. Um, we got married in 2018, and soon after we decided to relocate to Toronto, where he's from. So after moving to Toronto, I was eagerly looking for some opportunities for me as I was at that time between schools, between programs. I had a couple of recitals going on. We played with my husband on a tour in Lithuania and a small tour in Canada, but I was still looking for more, especially competitions, you know, just things to make myself, you know, work harder because I was out of school, so I didn't have the sort of um, schedule that other students have, you know. So yes, I found out about the competition through Alan Carver's website. And at first I got right away so excited because I knew this opportunity just seems like it was made for me. I love Chopin's music. It's right here in Toronto. I don't need to travel anywhere. It's just so perfect. Um, but there was this little detail. Um, it, this competition was only um, for Canadian permanent residents and Canadian citizens. And at that time I had just applied for my permanent residency. So there was no way of knowing whether I would be able to attend the contest um, because of my status. So it was- Yes, a and I remember that that came just in time. So you were able to enter fair and square as a Canadian resident. So uh, exactly. I remember living that story with you. Yes, Tell us a little now about your musical preparations. Well, um, I was lucky in a way because me and my husband, we had a concert in Prince Edward Island. It was part of the Indian River Festival, but it ended up being just a perfect run through for me to, to prepare for the competition. And then we just had to finish up and just come back to Toronto to practice more. And I was lucky at the time I was able to practice at the Royal Conservatory because I was already um, a student at, at the Glen Gould School. So it was very lucky for me because I could use the practice facilities, so it was really helpful. That's great. And I think I recall also that you were a little under the weather when the competition started. I think you were, um, you had um, a little bit of a cold or something like that after your trip. I did, I did, but thankfully it, it went away. And well, you know, when you have to play on stage, nothing really matters. The adrenaline kicks in and although I was coughing between pieces, <laughs> thankfully I didn't cough during them. So I was relieved, it all worked out. Right, and we were, uh, we, we of course enjoyed listening to all of the competitors um, and we were waiting to hear the results from round to round with you. And so um, let's jump ahead now to the second round, to the semifinals and listen to a little bit of um, your performance from the second round. And I believe you've selected the second sonata for us to listen to next. So let's do that now.
Well, that was really beautiful. Um, lovely to hear you play that beautiful sonata. And I think we'll have to go on and listen to the third and fourth movements in just a moment. But let's just pause for a few minutes to talk a little bit about it. Had you been playing that sonata for a long time before the competition? Um, yes, well, I have learned it for the first time, I believe, three or four years ago. Um, it goes without saying that it's one of the most um, monumental and probably the most, one of the most beautiful and important romantic piano sonatas in the repertoire. But I think it just, um, it holds such a special place among Chopin works as well. I remember when I started uh, studying it, I picked up uh, Chopin's biography, um, Chopin in Paris by Tad Schultz. Even though I read the Polish biography when I was younger, I wanted to read another one, just refresh you know, my knowledge of Chopin's life and get inspiration uh, from it. And I just was so overwhelmed again with how much Chopin um, experienced this burden of of his disease, of his sickness, and how much, you know, thinking about death and um, impacted his life from such an early age. So I think that second sonata sort of, to me, encompasses that aspect of his life. So I think it takes a lot of responsibility to bring it to stage and to absorb all that information and study the score and perform it. It's, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. Absolutely. And as pianists, you know, we study the sonatas of Haydn and Mozart and Beethoven and Schubert, and we come to Chopin, and it's so interesting the way he reinvents that form and genre and creates something yes. that has that structure, but, but really uh, recreates it in such a unique and special way. Yes, it's a monumental work. Uh, and it seems so cohesive at the same time. There's not a single redundant note. It's so compact, right? It's like an organism with every cell super important in it. And and yeah, so just reading about Chopin's life really, I think, made me discover this piece even more. Wonderful. And I think we'll, we'll uh, go back to that piece now and listen to your third and fourth movements and that third movement is uh, so so rich and deep in emotion and the effect of the fourth movement coming right after it is is really magical so let's listen to that now
Wow, thank you very much for that performance from 2019. This was Agne Rajivichute playing the second sonata in the semi-final round of the fifth Canadian Chopin piano competition in 2019. So tell us, Agne, how did you feel when you finished that performance? Can you think back to that moment um, when you had finished your semi-finals performance? What was going through your head and how did you feel? Um, well, I felt relieved. I felt um, I felt happy to be able to perform it because it's a, such an important work and to be able to bring it to stage is always uh, such an important event. But also throughout the whole competition, I felt very happy because I was able to play on a really good instrument and in great holes. Mussolini Hall is so beautiful. It had such great acoustics. And then the final round came and the Kerner Hall was such a dream come true to be able to play there. So every round was to me, um, I remember vividly so many great things and feeling just, just overwhelmed with feeling. And I believe we had drawn the letter R for the senior division starting, and you were always the first performer, weren't you? Oh, yes, absolutely. And uh, as we just talked about this immense responsibility and the emotional depth of the second scenario, it was it was a bit of a challenge for me to just wake up and you know warm up and just have it for breakfast, basically. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that, of course, left you free with a little more time between the rounds to prepare for the next one. So there's some advantages and disadvantages to it, which is why we pick it by uh, by chance rather than assigning a letter. And I'm, I'm wondering, did you at any point listen to any of the other competitors during the competition? No, not during the competition. No, no I sort of... Um... I just focused on music, really tried to make it myself, tried to make it more of a performance experience, think of um, just the music and just sort of just sleep and, and practice and that's it. So I did, I, later I went back online and listened to other inspiring performers from the competition. So yeah, that was very, very nice to hear them too. That was probably a wise way of doing it. <laughs> and shortly after the competition, you began your studies at the Glenn Gould School in Toronto. Um, what attracted you to come to the Glenn Gould School and tell us a little bit about your experience there so far? Mm -hmm. Well, um, as I said, when I moved to Toronto, I was sort of between programs. So I was looking actually to go back to school and to have a little more time to develop as a pianist, to have more opportunities to perform and to just have, you know, the society that I missed while being in school. So just moving to Toronto, I realized there's this amazing school right nearby me, the Glengold School. So I submitted my application and then I was very lucky to be accepted. And I really love my studies there. I have two incredible teachers, John Perry and David Louie. They're both extremely warm and supportive and, and the facilities are wonderful top-notch pianos to practice on, which is a huge plus for any pianist. So I've been, I've been actually really happy studying there. I'm right now midway through my program and I'm kind of bittersweet about graduating already. <laughs> Right. It's, it goes by quickly, doesn't it? So, of course, the last uh, six months have been very eventful for all of us, and we've all had to change our routines in many ways. So tell us a little bit about how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected you personally and your routine and your plans. Well, as the pandemic was progressing, I think everyone was living with some fear because everything seemed so uncertain. Um, the concerts were canceled, the competitions were postponed and then delayed, um, the, even the schools closed, right? So there was a lot of uncertainty and I think there came, there was a lot of anxiety because of that for everyone. But eventually I think everyone was just trying to make the most of it. So. What I did, I just tried to practice and just to take my time at the piano and use it as an opportunity to grow, to sort of put the career worries on hold and to just focus on what I love most, which is the music. So in a way, it was a calm period for me, luckily, because I was not 
are not affected by the pandemic you know i'm healthy so i was very lucky because of that wonderful and of course we were all uh disappointed about the postponing of the Cana of the international chopin piano competition understandable of course but um it gives an extra year now um, in terms of staying longer, focusing on the music of Chopin. Have you been playing other repertoire as well or focusing mostly on Chopin? Well, over summer I did uh, learn uh, some Bach and some Liszt just to balance out sort of because focusing on one composer for a while might get um, a little bit challenging. So I decided to sort of branch out into other composers as well. Um, but at the moment, I'm now back onto practicing mostly Chopin, as I really missed it. <laughs> Great. So we asked you to share another recording with us um, today from outside of the Chopin competition. And you've selected a recording of the Mazurka Opus 67, number four. Um, so let's listen to that now. Chopin no Mazurka. So thank you for sharing that with us. That was beautiful. Um, is there anything about that performance that you'd like to share with us? Well, it was actually an encore performance after a recital in Lithuania. Um, I sort of spontaneously decided to play it and it, and it, um, it I think it was a nice, nice touch to the recital. <laughs> Great. Um, so um, just as we as we start to wrap up, um, here's a, a, another question um, that I'd like to ask you. If you had a crystal ball and you could gaze ahead into the future and see yourself 10 years from now, what would you like to see? Well, it is sort of a difficult question. I don't really think about the future that much. Um, in the most immediate future, I would like for the world to get back, on, get back on its feet and for people to be healthier and safe again. And I would like for culture and the arts to flourish again. That to me would be 
I think one of my dreams for maybe a second renaissance, you know, people going back to concert halls and filling in that lost time, that gap that we had, you know, disconnected from one another. So, so that would be nice. And as for myself, I just, I guess I, I want to dedicate my life to music. So the most important thing for me is that I keep growing as a pianist and as a musician, and that um, but it would be nice if I had concerts, if I could play with the orchestras, of course, that would be the best case scenario. But in any case, I will be happy if I can pursue it and uh, and just live with music. That's, that's my dream. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. And uh, we from the Canadian Chopin Society um, wish you all the best for those next 10 years, but especially for the year ahead. We will be following you very closely as you prepare first for the preliminary round, which we hope will happen in April, and then the competition itself in October. We will look forward um, to maybe taking a peek a sneak peek into your preliminary round performance sometime, which we hope you'll share with us and that we'll be able to share with our uh, society virtually, if not in person. So we'll look forward to hearing um, more from you as 2021 unfolds and wish we wish you all the best um, for your preparations and for a, a, a wonderful trip to Warsaw to see uh, um, all the places where Chopin walked again, Ben, of course, um, to have um, beautiful performances in the competition. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for featuring. You are very welcome. And thank you to our listeners for joining us today. Please stay tuned for updates about future live streams. Stay safe and stay healthy.